Starting off with something pretty random here, but uh, it's obscure and I just happened to think of it, so we're going to start with it. Um, so this is Dark Lobby, or Edgelord Lobby as I used to call it. Um, it's between the Vanilla Lobby and the uh, Floor 2B. So ground pounding this sun thing uh, has done different things in every version of this game, uh, at least all the ones I've played. Uh, in 0 0.7, it used to lead to a thing called Deadly Descent, where you would kind of fly down through a giant pit, and then it would take you to a level that was like kind of a red volcano type of place, and you had to climb out of it. Uh, that level got removed in 0 0.9, and it just took you to Mario's Maze, which is also what Fake Lobby took you to. Uh, in 1.0, it now takes you to Challenge Lobby, but uh, sometimes it can take you to this dark version. And it can happen at any time, but it's more likely at night. The dark version uh, has boarded up all the walls. This one just says this. This is uh, normally a door that would lead out to Vanilla Castle Grounds, but it's also boarded up. Used to be an eyeless peach, peach painting here. That's gone. So the only other thing you can actually do in here is just go through this door and... Uh, wouldn't you believe it leads to the uh, fucked up version of Floor 4B? There is a warp right there that takes you out of this and puts you in the, like, you know, good version of this, but uh, I'm gonna wander around in this one. Okay, it didn't take long. <laughs> I wanted to see how long I could navigate that before it started getting really annoying. So, I don't really have much of a game plan in this video. I uh, have stuff that I want to show off, and uh, whether or not we get to it just kind of depends on how well I happen to navigate through the castle and find stuff, I guess. Because I did say I would finish uh, finish exploring this particular map and showing all the levels in it, and I do still want to do that. I just have to figure out where the hell stuff actually is in this map. Because you better believe I didn't plan ahead. I'm at least heading into familiar territory here. This is, uh... I feel like I've been going in a straight line for half an hour here, but... This is, uh... At least kind of what we figured out last time. This should lead to... Something, eventually. I say very unsure. Okay. Yeah, here we go. Um... I already showed the level in here, but uh, there was something. There was an aspect of it that I forgot to show off. Oh yeah, I forgot I'm still playing at night. I should probably change that back. If you fall off of this level, it'll take you uh, here, and I quote here. There's another place to get there, though, so let us uh, actually go back to that one. While I'm... Uh, navigating here. Just to explain uh, quickly here, there was another hotfix released for this game. Uh, at this point, it's been a couple weeks, I think. I uh, don't have a full list of everything it changed. It's mostly minor stuff. I believe it fixed a couple more crashes. Um, the King Womps Arena area has been changed a little. It also uh, made the five Bowser red stars actually count towards the total. That's probably the most noticeable thing. Anyway, let's just go in here. This should be the same level as before. Yep. This is Dream Forest. It's another thing from Dream 64, uh, which I'm just kind of, you know, relaying that information because that's what I've heard. I haven't played that. Pretty small, simple level. Just has one star on it. This uh, used to be a site of crashes. There used to just be this, like, malevolent zone kind of, like, down from where I'm standing now that if you even approached it or the camera looked towards it, the game would freeze. That uh, does not appear to be the case anymore, thankfully. But, uh, yeah, for the record, I'm still playing the 
day two version because I have a uh, copy of that that can be edited, so. There might still be some minor changes between what I'm playing and the uh, final public version. This is just a uh, Princess's Secret slide. I forget if it has a more specific name than that. Uh, this used to be one of the like challenge levels that you would get to from Star Road in point nine, but uh, most of those have been switched out. I always felt that this level was uh, not entirely deserving of being like an endgame thing. So. Just the one star. And because uh, this wasn't a proper painting, this is probably going to put me out back to the Plexal upstairs, which is... Yeah. Okay. Um, this is a good, good opportunity to go back to Parallel Lobby. Because there was some stuff there I wanted to show last time that I just kind of never got around to. should take me to Vanilla Lobby. And actually, while I'm there, I'm probably going to get distracted and show some other stuff. Oh. That doesn't take you to Vanilla Lobby anymore. Huh. I don't remember when that was changed. Okay, well. Nothing like making me out into a liar, so. Let's just take the other pipe. If I'm going to be in the area, I might as well uh, show some of the stuff that changed in Vanilla Lobby, because there are a few things. And just in case you're not aware, uh, yeah, this is still Vanilla Lobby, even though it looks different, because this is the uh, nighttime version of it. And I mentioned last time how there's a toad up here that uh, used to have a different star ID, but it should be the... Same as the one that I got in the last video now. So, let's see. Um, first, let's show off this little friend. I like the little pose it's in. Yeah, it's basically just there to be kind of a minor jump scare. It doesn't do anything as soon as you approach it, it despawns. But, uh, it's just there at night now. And, God, I probably have some stuff to say about this Big Boo level over here, but uh, I'm going to give that one some time. So let's just go back. If you enter the Vanilla Courtyard and then come back, it takes you to this place. And uh, this is basically just kind of a copy-paste of Vanilla Basement, but obviously it's dark and there's some changes to it. Uh... First thing I want to point out, these doors up here. They, uh, they give you this message, and there's no way to open these. But, um, believe it or not, that was a uh, relatively late change. Because, uh, even though the map doesn't have anything that these doors could connect to, uh, there was a point when you could open them, because they were specifically set up to only open if you had 120 stars. And, uh... The reason for that was basically just because, like... Yeah, he wanted to make them unopenable, but then the, like, field that you enter the, like, star number into can't accept over 255. And so even if you put in 255, you'd still be able to open it eventually, since the game has more stars than that. Um, and... It used to just be you could open these and it would just teleport you straight down into, like, the basement. Basically, like, keeping the same coordinates of those, but just, you know, the first valid value. Um, they should be changed now to actually require 14 reds, which is actually impossible. So, I don't think you can open those anymore. I didn't remember that one being locked. Weird. Um, there's a vanish cap, which is actually going to be relevant to my interest in a minute here. Over here is a toad that I completely overlooked. 
for a very long time when I was going through the game and setting up star IDs. Uh, I didn't know that this one gave you one, so this star was a duplicate of something for a while until it was eventually brought to my attention, and then I had to... I think this one swapped with one of the, uh, one of the vanilla lobby toads, actually, if I remember right. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, that's why the, there's a couple stars in this place that all sort of lead to different stuff, or, like, point to different levels, and that's just because I didn't know that one was there. So this place is looking pretty dead. Um, let me go check the door that leads to, like, the... Yeah, same thing here. Here's your maze room. As a toad, what does he say? I mean, sure, if you say so. Nothing else in this area. And, uh, we have gone full circle. We're back to Vanilla Lobby. Wasn't the only thing in there, though, so let me go back. I always thought the star was pretty clever, and, uh, when I was stalking the, uh, like, Chris's Discord server for the first week or so after the game released, this seemed to be a, uh, very commonly missed one. There would be people who had, uh, you know, like, 400 stars and were kind of whittling down the last few, and asking for, like, hey, I'm missing these IDs, can I get any hints to where these are? And this one was, uh, almost always on that list. I can understand why, but, uh, you know, it makes sense, because there is something here in vanilla, so... It does make sense to check it, it's just easy to overlook. And we're back here. Um, I'm trying to think, is there anything else in vanilla lobby that I care about at the moment? Um... Well, I'll tell you what, I have a, uh, stupid video of something that, uh, isn't in the game anymore. I'll go ahead and insert that, and then I'll, uh, rejoin you in a minute. So, here's something stupid that I ran into when testing maps, uh, a couple days before release. So, in Vanilla Basement, uh, if you go into a level, it doesn't matter if it's this one or the, uh, Shifting Sandland one, and then grab a star, uh, things are gonna get real dumb when you exit. So, just, uh, give the clip a minute here, and I will, uh, let it speak for itself for a moment. So, we pop out. And then this happens. Similar to Moses, Modus Factory. Um, for some reason, the tiny amount of water... Love that, by the way. Uh, for some reason, the tiny amount of water on the ground, uh, just increases vertically to fill the entire map, um, as soon as you exit a level painting. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, like I said, I discovered this a couple days before release. Uh, Chris was very baffled by it and was trying to figure out what would be causing it and, you know, tried changing some stuff. And the thing that it seemed to be tied to, for whatever reason, was the, uh, the pillar objects that you pound in to drain the moat. Um, we found that removing those but keeping the water level would... I, I think I think that would fix it? I don't... I'm not the one that fixed it. I don't remember specifically, but basically, after testing and, you know, trying to lower the water and all this stuff, it was found that that was the best option. Um, so... The pillars were basically just taken out and replaced with static objects that you can't actually pound in, and uh, now the water doesn't do that anymore. There was a part of me that's sad, because I really liked how stupid that was, but I, it was definitely not intended, so I understand removing it. Um, and that place has enough going on with the scary fire face that chases you at night anyway, so it didn't need this adding to it. But either way, figured that was just an interesting little thing to show. Alrighty, time to, uh, wander around randomly a bit more. So, back in Parallel Lobby, a few things here I wanted to show off. Um, one of them is, uh, more just a demonstration of a concept than anything else, and we're gonna do that one first, so I need a Vanish Cap to go into the level here. 
I, uh, never remember what the name of this level is. I used to call it, like, Penguin Peaks. I'd, yeah, I'd have to look up the name of it, I don't feel like it, but... Anyway, in, uh, this level here, we have, uh... The fuck is this music? I don't think I've ever heard this music in my life. <laughs> this must have been a relatively recent addition after I had, uh, tested this level multiple times. Because I did have to do a sweep of, uh, every level in the game at one point to make sure that the water was working in all of them. I, maybe I didn't do this one, because I guess it doesn't have water, but... Huh. I don't know what this song is, it's weird. Anyway, um... I never remember which is the correct penguin, I think it's the second one. So, let's uh, go find out if that's the case. <laughs> this music is kind of hilarious, honestly. Anyway, the uh, reason I'm showing this is not going to be clear at first, but, uh... Okay, good. So yeah, everything works there, you know, probably the way you'd expect. Now let me, uh, go fight this boss over here. Which is... For some reason I forgot that it was a moto, so I thought this was a chill bully. Maybe that got changed later also. Now I'm curious, I want to see if my notes call this a moto. I swear this used to be a chill bully. Anyways, so the reason I did all this was because in, uh, in 0 0.9, both of those stars would fly up here. If you did both of those objectives without picking up either of them, they would just be right next to each other, and they would be duplicates. And, you know, there were a ton of duplicates in that game, but these were duplicates for a specific reason. It's because certain stars like these... Ones that come from bosses, objectives like, you know, delivering the penguin, that type of thing. Uh, they'll generate a star, but uh, the star can be manipulated. There's an object in the game called a star magnet, and I'm pretty sure that this exists in vanilla, or at least something similar to it, uh, that basically tells the star where it should go, so that it always has a fixed position instead of it spawning in a weird place, because, like... You know, when you're doing, like, 100 coin stars in vanilla, if you collect one near a ceiling, it can, like, spawn the star inside a ceiling, which really sucks. Uh, and there's probably a possibility of other stars doing similar crap, so they'd put in the star magnet as a way to kind of fix that issue. And so, originally, there was just one star magnet up here that attracted both of those stars, and... Then, uh, when going over everything for the 1.0 release and setting the IDs and stuff, I basically also had to figure out what levels needed to have additional magnets added in. And at first it was, uh, we weren't really sure if you could just throw in a second magnet and it would work. But, uh, it seems that the way that they work is they'll basically, like, whenever a star spawns, if there's a, if there's a magnet in the level, it'll go to it, no matter how far away it is. But if there's several magnets, it'll just go to whichever one is the closest. And there's a couple levels where that actually kind of posed a problem, and I'll have to show those off. But uh, right now these should be separate ideas, so I'll go back in and get the one from the boss just to uh, demonstrate. Not that you uh, probably are, like, you know, not taking my word for it or whatever, but... They're a pretty simple concept, but I just wanted to kind of explain them, because I've mentioned star magnets at least once before, but I didn't really say what they were, and they're definitely going to be coming up again in the future. Especially with the, uh, Big Boo's Haunt levels, because those were kind of a pain in the ass. Um, and, uh, the deal with these magnets, um, in addition to doing what, they ex what I just explained... It okay, good, I thought I got stuck on a wall or something. Um... The other thing that you need to know about these is they will, 
like, you can give a magnet a star ID, and whenever a star gets attracted to a magnet, it takes on the ID of the magnet. So, like, the one that was inside that boss is probably not designated in any way, if I had to guess. There's, like, a field for the star ID, and it was probably just set to zero, because it gets pulled to this, and then this sets it as whatever star it's supposed to be. Um, so if several stars get pulled towards the same magnet, then they're gonna end up being duplicates, and generally you're not gonna want that, so it can lead to situations where it's kind of annoying. I don't know if I have a way back from here. Um, I might have to go on a little adventure on this source. Okay, good. What does this even lead to again? I don't remember. Oh, of course. <laughs> Forgot about this place. Did this place have the weird backwards music originally? I think that's also a new addition. I'm surprised that the game doesn't crash or place, like, you know, creepy text when you get near the Dragon Mario. Anyway. Ignoring that, let's, uh, go backwards and game. Where's the door? Mr. Krabs, the front door is missing! Okay, so, moving on from one snow level, let's go ahead and take a look at another one real quick. It's, uh, fairly short and unimportant, but it is a new level, so... Figure it's uh, worth looking at. Should be not down here. That is the city. I don't think it's this way. No, that's Hazy Maze Cave. Or Hazy Memory Cave, I think it's called. This is some other stuff. Okay, now I remember where it is. It's in the little divot. Should be in this direction. Ah, yes, the divot. Here we go. I, I don't have a better term for that. <laughs> Should be this one over here. Yeah. So this is Frosty Mountains. It used to be called Frosty Battlefield. And this level used to be um, one of at least two Snow bob -on Battlefield variants. Basically just, you know, the original map, but snowy and with a little bit of change to it. There was, like, some ice pillars and stuff. Uh, that one was removed, probably just due to it being kind of redundant. And this level was put in its place. I couldn't really tell you if there's any specific, like, history to this one. Or if it was, like, inspired by a different hack or anything, but... Kind of just feels like a basic little like, boss level, I guess, because it's just a sort of a lead up to this. And this should be basically identical to the fight that we did before, but let's go ahead and do it. I love the speed up, okay? Behold, Star Magnets. This one is placed abnormally high. The ABC community would not enjoy that. Alright, I guess at this point I should probably go back to 4B. There is an entrance in this map that goes there, I just have to actually find it. There's another level down there, it's that underwater maze. The other door leads to Switzerland. Um, we'll be looking there again at some point. Okay, so if we go this way, this direction leads off to a million places for like a freaking mile. Um, you go up here, there's a couple rainbow levels to the sides, and then go through that upper door, and then that leads to a whole big four-way intersection, and the Bowser airship level is up there, which I'll have to do at some point, because it has a red star. But for right now, uh, I'm just interested in the fact that this one has these six little branches on the sides, and they used to be pointless, and now one of them isn't. Um, there's a few places in the game that do this, and 
I can say from experience playing through the previous versions, every time I would see one of these, it'd be like, okay, these have never had anything in them before. I'm guessing this one won't either. And I check them all and it's like, wow, what a shock. It didn't do anything. So it's kind of nice that one of them finally does something now. And, uh, yep, we're, we're back here. Except I think we're in an area with some actual, yeah, level entrances for once. Excuse the, uh, background conversation, by the way. Okay, this one is... Dream Battlefield. As with all the other levels that have Dream in the name, I don't know if this one's from Dream 64, it very well might be. Um... Go ahead and first uh, start with another star that is frequently missed by people. Because there's just kind of one in a box here. When I first played this level, um, like, remember when I, when I was doing the testing for this game, a lot of times I would just kind of be told, like, hey, go check out map, like, you know, Bowser 3-8. I don't know what the idea of this one is, I'm just guessing. Um, and I'd play it, make sure it works and everything, and I'd have no idea where it was actually connected in the uh, overall game. I thought this one was meant to be a blend of bob on Battlefield and Wops Fortress, because it kind of feels like one. Um, I don't know if that was the like actual motivation here. Um, if it was one, I felt like it probably should have had King bob -omb and King Womp in it. I don't know if you can have both of those. There might be something to, with, like, object banks that doesn't allow it. But, uh, at the very least, it's got King Womp, so let's go ahead and do this fight. Trying to uh, cheese this fight the vanilla way when the uh, ground pound has like no stall time in the air is always really weird. Doesn't always work out. Also, I think because of difficulty scaling, he's getting up really quick. Yeah, that's definitely faster than normal. Yeah, kind of gotta be on your game to do that. I forgot that gave original text. I think it's basically just some generic, like, you know, you will never, never, you know, pretty much just that, just nonsense. Uh, should be one other star in here. And I'm hoping not a game crash. I'm, uh, I'm gonna check it out. If it doesn't happen, I'll explain what I remember it being. Because the thing is, this is one of those crashes that I found while testing, and then later when I tried to replicate it to show it off, I just couldn't. So, I have no idea what's up with the random crashes in this game. They, uh, always seem kind of inconsistent. Hopefully they're all gone in the current version, but I don't really know for sure. Anyway, yeah, last star is just in here. Let me see if the game is going to take an issue with this rock spire here. Well, so far so good. Oh! I did get it to happen. Nice. You know, you, you, you ground pound this, Mario gets skewered by the thing, and the game just gives up. Um, I think it's another hidden one-up crashing the game. Again, I don't know if the current version fixes this or not, but at least this one, uh, you kind of have to go out of your way to activate it. It's not just, you know, you get within an nautical mile of some invisible object and the game takes an issue with it. That's an improvement. That should be everything for that place. I think I've got three other levels up here. I think they're all just, yeah, kind of in the same hallway. Is this... Toxic Ruins? Nope, oh, this is Water Cube. Water Cube's just got one star. Um, I, 
kind of love the name of this one, honestly. Water Cube it just sounds like something that would be a beta level name. You know, it's like Lava Bubble or Fire Bubble or whatever. Um, Snow Slider, that kind of thing. So I'm going to save state here and come back to this because uh, there's a hole in the wall over there. And you are uh, definitely able to get up here. Just gotta do a little wall jumping stuff. And when you go through here, this is uh, this is where the star is, but a little bit too high to reach. And as it turns out, uh, you are now stuck because the water level is too low for you to get back out. So. The only way to get that one is to raise the water level with this. Not sure if that was the intent that you could get stuck in there, but that's how it is. And, uh, you know, since you're always able to fast travel, it's not the biggest problem, but... That's about it for that one. I don't think there's any, uh... NPCs giving you, you know, weird, cryptic, vaguely threatening messages like there are in a lot of the other Wet Dry World type levels. Okay, I recognize this random ice window. I think this is not the way I want to go. Yeah, this is going to lead into some other bullshit. Um, so I think I want to keep going this way. Past these two level entrances and... Okay, yeah. Pretty sure this is the last one right here. Uh, yep, yeah, okay. Let's go ahead and knock this one out, and then we'll pretty much be done with this whole floor. So here is Toxic Ruins, or Toxic Forest, as it used to originally be called, and then it was determined that it wasn't really much of a forest. The first thing I gotta do in here is show this off. Incredibly easy to do. The collision here just kind of doesn't really exist. <laughs> I found that when I first tested this level, it was one of the first things I ran into because I just kind of tried to go up the stairs and, you know, just, I'm like, oh, what the hell? All right, cool, great. Um, and I reported that and Chris was like, eh, not my level, don't care. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Um, this level used to only have one star in it. Um, I think there is a cannon up here. I need to pop in this. Where's the center? There we go. That was it. Um, just get in the cannon, shoot up, grab the star, and that was the whole level. Um, it now has a second one, and... It was uh, one of the last three stars added to the game, as I showed off in one of the previous informational videos. Uh, this level now has red coins in it. Um, and, you know, noteworthy in my opinion, at least, uh, this one was set up by me. I uh, had never placed red coins in a level before, so I just kind of did my best to put them in interesting areas and spread them out a fair amount. I think I did a pretty decent job of it. Okay, that was a little on the shitty side. But yeah, like I said, the the like the timeline of events was the game was released, people were playing it, finding bugs, and there were a couple people taking issue with the MIP stars, because you can kind of screw yourself over with those. And Chris basically decided, like, okay, you know, these have been this way for a long time, but it sucks and nobody wants to deal with them, so let's get rid of the MIP stars. Uh, at the same time, people had discovered the duplicate in Blazing Bullet Factory. So that was made into one of the uh, new stars to replace the four MIPS ones. Chris made the one in Snowman's Land Beta. Um, 
I suggested the weird Banjo Tui star that I showed in the last video, the one that was in a uh, steep green summit behind the fence. And we were just kind of looking over the list of levels. It's like, you know, what's something else that could use something in it? And originally it was going to be, um, I don't remember the name of it. I called, I used to call it Perplexing Pyramid. It's the one where there's like a kind of a floating pyramid diamond thing over some quicksand. Um, we were going to do something with that one. Um, I thought about making it so there would be red coins like in the quicksand and you had to get a Koopa shell to ride over it and collect those. Uh, but we ended up doing it here. And so I just kind of set up the red coins in this level and test a bit and made sure it worked and everything. At first I actually set it up so that... Uh, before, before we made it red coins, I was just kind of looking over the level as it was, and I, I'm like, there's like four pokies in here, just kind of in different corners of the level. What if I make it so after you kill all the pokies, it spawns a star, and I was just like, nah, that's a little dumb. It, nothing really indicates that. And I kind of agreed, so we set this up. I believe that basically does it for uh, levels connected to floor 4B. Let me just see what this connects to. Oh. Wait, what? You mean to tell me I came out of this and I was right next to that level the whole time? <laughs> Apparently so. Good. Okay. Um... There is still, like, one other thing on this floor. I don't remember where it is. I'm not gonna worry about it too much. I'm trying to think how it even connects. I think it's from, like, Purple Castle or something. I'll find it at some point in the playthrough if I don't find it now. I always think it's over here. Oh, actually, yeah, I think it is. Can I push either of these bookshelves? Yes. What does this one do to? This is Plexal Hallway. Right next to the weird Bowser statue thing. I th thought. What the hell? Is that not here anymore? Or no, it's a different one. It's... There it is. Yeah, this is an old map. This was in the last version. It's just... There's a big dark Bowser statue. And if you approach it, then uh, the game won't like it. As shown here. Um, but there's also this. Uh, we should be able to hear something in here. I'm hearing a background conversation. There's the noise. So. Good. Wait. I thought I had negative lives. How did that actually kill me? Ah, uh, no, I guess I'm not in the negatives. Okay, never mind. Uh, internally, this is just called Krushma. There's a lot of crap in the game like that. It's like, oh, Krushma balls. Um... The map doesn't have a name, as far as I'm aware. I just call it the Crusher. But, uh... Let me actually remember what this thing is called internally, the name of the Crusher itself. It's, it's called, like, Susu Susoidial Square or something. Give me a minute. I, I need to see what that thing is. Okay, I looked up what the word is, and it is, uh... Sinusoidal. Sinusoidal. Uh, having the form of a sine curve. Not exactly sure of the relevance there, but it goes up and down, so that's at least part of it. I don't know. Is this, uh, this purple castle? Yeah, okay. So, oh, hello. <laughs> Let us, uh, let's take a look at this place, because this place is also new, and I, uh, 
scarcely remember how it connects to anything because it was added like two days before the game went up. Um, I showed this off in one of my announcement videos, but uh, it's already been a while since I did that, so. Let's see. Um, so there's already. There was purple upstairs in previous versions of the game. This is just kind of like an expansion to that. Uh, is that the one I just came from? No, I think this is the one I came from. Okay, so there's a door there. There's a door there. There's two doors on this side. And then... I don't think there was anything on the other one. Just this empty painting. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, check what the middle one is, because I don't remember. Does this just connect to... I don't remember if this is the same map or not. Although I do think this is another map that is uh, subject to things fucking up. Let's see if that's true. I got comments on the last one uh, when I showed the painting lobby kind of fucking up that uh, it was related somehow to the ripple effect on the painting. Like, when I was going through the door, it might have been, like, interacting with that in some way. <laughs> sure enough. That is very weird. Okay, does this go to Ghostly Courtyard? No, this... Okay, so this is Purple Upstairs. Which is the old map. Yeah. This one's kind of always been around. There's a bunch of stuff that leads to this. Most notably, this painting kind of hops back and forth between the normal upstairs and the purple one. Um, it also connects to, like, Bowser's Castle and a few other things. Um, there's the painting that I said, uh... What did I say about it? It was, uh, it mocks me with its smug aura. Always a favorite of mine. So, let's take a look at that painting. Um, I believe this painting is one of three ways to get to this new area. Save beforehand in case this is going to be something I don't want. Okay, I think this is the good one. Yeah, okay. Take this massive space. Do you have a face? No. Of course you don't. And this should actually eject an air, right? Yeah, okay, so... We don't have to do any backtracking. Um, but, uh... There is more to this area. That's the only star in it. Um, this is just Mips' forest. Pretty straightforward name. Um... Obviously... Meant to be a little on the unsettling side, but there's... Nothing in this place that is actually harmful, you know, other than just regular enemies, I guess. But, uh... There is a little more to that. Yeah, we've got this pipe. And, uh... Who's hanging out back there? Could it be our good friend? There he is. Yeah, that's gonna crash the game if he touches me. Notable about this area is the fact that if you pause, it does the press ah! thing, which uh, prevents uh, fast travel. But uh, you can still go back through the pipe here, and you can escape from this one. So that's like the only like spook zone that you can actually exit from safely. Uh, you can also get to that place from a Big Boo's Haunt-style entrance, I think, in Ghostly Courtyard. We'll take a look at that probably soon. And, um, the, the spooky version of that with the Mario clone, um, is a replacement for what used to be called Wonderland Woods. I don't remember what... Yeah, now it's just called Shadow Forest, uh, which was kind of a weird place. It was it, you, you got to it through Polygonal Chaos, and um, it was basically just a giant grid of trees with a 
Mario clone that would, you know, home in on you and there was nothing else you could do other than just shut the game off. Um, from what I understand in uh, Unabandoned, that got turned into a red coin hunt that might have been for a red star and it was kind of based off of like the eight pages from Slender or whatever. Uh, Chris didn't ever want that connection so he removed it and just kind of replaced it with that. Love the empty box. So, this room is completely pointless. Um, I believe this was added after all of the green stars were already set in place, otherwise I would have said this might have been a decent spot for one of them, but, uh, some stuff is just kind of meant to be pointless. Uh, this is the one I came in from? Okay, well that led to... I mean, I got there from 4B. I swear this leads up to... Um... Ghostly Courtyard somehow. Oh, is it this? Yeah, here we go. Okay. So, this place is uh, also a replacement map. I, I like this invisible wall here, what the fuck. Um, I don't remember what this one used to be called, but, uh, there was, basically this is, uh, this courtyard used to have, it, I don't think it had ghosts originally, the door in the back used to be the entrance to, uh, Melancholy Mausoleum, which got removed. There used to be, like, a little warp in the center thing, which, actually, let me look, so there's still something here. Yes. Yeah, it does what it used to. It takes you to a uh, crimson version of Uncanny Courtyard. Um, so yeah, that that was always there. And then there's doors here which connect to, it should be Tubular Lobby and Imperfect Sanctuary. Yeah, this is Imperfect Sanctuary, which is... Uh, I'll just look at it briefly, because people who have watched my other series know what this place is, but maybe not by name. There's a star back over that way. This one's... I guess I'll show this also. This is, you know, it's unrelated, but it's also not anything actually new to this game, but if you go in and out of this door enough times, it'll eventually kind of fuck you over. I think it's a one out of five chance that these doors take you to a duplicate map. Yeah, it'll eventually just replace it with these things and then... I don't think there's anything else necessarily wrong with this place. It doesn't have the star in it. There's no, like, spooky shit that'll kill you or anything, but... Oh, there is a star. Wait, no, this is fake, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's go back. We don't need to bother with this place. Um, yes, thank you again. I don't remember having to do that to get up this ramp before. Uh. Okay, so the other door then must be tubular lobby. We'll look at that momentarily. Um, and verify that there is indeed a BBH entrance into this forest. I'm not seeing it. I swear there was one in here. Maybe there used to be and it got removed. Or maybe I'm completely full of shit and I'm thinking of a different map entirely. Yeah. Well, never mind. So this door... Yeah. I didn't show this place on camera yet, right? This is apparently based off of a photo of something. I have seen the picture, and I don't remember what the lore behind it is. It was, like, some alleged, like, theme park attraction, I think, that was just set up like this with the bob and all that. Like, this was, like, a little statue or something. 
Um, but uh, <clears throat> tubular lobby used to be totally different. It was uh, it was the one that was like kind of a diamond shape of just you know different rooms with similar layouts but like different wallpaper. It basically just it, it kind of just got a makeover and turned into this, which uh, keeps the general spirit, but is laid out differently and, in, in my opinion, is actually more confusing than the original, which was probably the intent. Is this familiar floor? Yeah. Or whatever this place is called. I, I honestly can't keep track of a lot of the names in this game. Um, I used to call that place... Castle Nexus, but that's not its actual name. There's Familiar Floor, and then it, like, connects to, like, Plexal Hallway 2 or something, which I think is an unofficial name. I, I, I don't know. Don't ask me. So, that's what's up that way. Let's go over this way, then. If I'm remembering right, one of these should lead to the, uh bridge with the, like, clocks on it and stuff, um, and the other one leads to Lunar Tower. So here's some weird shit. These little bronze coins are just basically regular coins. The silver one, this one is always guaranteed to be here, um, but you can get them to show up in other levels just through random chance. Um, if you play the game long enough, they just basically start spawning. And these silver coins are weird. A lot of times, they'll just do nothing. Uh, sometimes they'll crash the game. And I have video evidence that at least in 0.9, they had a chance to spawn a star. I've never seen that again outside of that one instance of it happening in the video, but uh, I am curious if it's ever happened to anybody else. But yeah, they do. They boing. I'm trying to see if I can get this to like crash the game or do anything else weird. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> Good shit. That is an intentional crash, by the way. Um, I'm not gonna keep collecting it and push my luck too much. All right, let me think. This is probably that one clock hall. Yeah, almost certainly. I think this place might actually just be called Clock Hall. I don't remember. It's it's the one that, like, kind of blew my mind in the last playthrough, because I noticed that you could go behind that painting, and it never did anything. And then one day I went through that pipe, and I'm like, oh shit, it's the place! <laughs> um, this hallway just connects, like... Plexal Lobby and 2B, I think. Anyway. Nothing else really noteworthy in that area. Um, should be one other hall to check. In addition to... What the hell is this blue line on the wall? You can't just have a blue line on the wall, come on. But, uh, is this a thing? Yeah, this is a thing. These are negative coins, right? Yeah, you don't want these. This should be Plexal Basement. Yes. Wait. No. Oh god, this is that one maze. Ugh, we gotta come back here at some point. I'm not prepared to deal with that right now. Now I'm curious, actually, before I, uh, go off and exp Oh, crap, can I not get back from this? Or, no, I think there's a warp in here, maybe? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I don't remember this place, like, at all. I explored it once, and it was, uh, I never, you know, documented it in any way, so... It's not exactly fresh in my memory. Okay, so this one should lead to Lunar Tower. I 
nice little uh, ten coins here. I don't think those show up anywhere else in the game. I don't think those bronze ones do either. Anyway, this map is uh, as pointless as ever, for now at least. I, uh, trying to remember how else you could reach this other than through Tubular Lobby. I think there's like a place you can look up at the ceiling and it warps you there, but it's, it's just a tower. All right, let me, wow, camera was not working with me there. Uh, yeah, I can't think of anything else here, so let me actually go to the actual basement, because I want to check something. Because there used to be a warp from there into the, uh, into the tubular lobby, and I'm curious if it still exists. After we run around for a while and potentially get lost. Now I know where I am. Does this still take you to the lobby, or what does this do? I think that's what it used to do. I don't really remember. Okay, do you do anything? I guess that's just a one-way. Okay. Which I think it was in the first place. Yeah. So basically all the same connections that used to be here are the same, it's just the map itself is laid out differently. Alright. Uh, what else we got, then? Um, still got some stuff I can show off in the video. I'm looking at my list of things, and uh, I can show off something very inconsequential. It's uh, nearby, at least, so I'll do that. Yes, we hear her. This is, uh, this is a new level. And this is probably the level that I have the least, like, positive to say about in the game. Um, there used to be, like, a whole big, like, aquatic fortress type thing here. Um, it got scrapped and it was just replaced with, uh, whatever the hell this level is now. Um, pretty small and straightforward. Just kind of looking around to see if there's anything in it that I might have missed. I like the weird texture on the ground, at least. And we are still swimming. And, uh... <laughs> yeah, that's... That's pretty much the level. In terms of, uh, well, so yeah, there's a star there, and then there's just, if you keep going, there's just kind of another one. Um, this one sort of fits with the vibe of just weird-ass, like, half-baked Mario 64 levels that you would come up with in your sleep. Um, so I guess it's at least got that going for it, but yeah, I don't I don't really did get this one. Uh, let's see. There's some other... Yeah, I'm in the neighborhood. Let's go ahead and hop in here. This is actually not where I meant to go, but once again, since we're in the neighborhood, I might as well. Um, in my playthrough of 0 0.9, I was always very bothered by the existence of this black square and a similar one in, I think, 3B, and maybe one other place. There were just a bunch of these places with, like, underwater paths that would branch off, and one of them would always lead to a pointless black square that didn't do anything. Um, they are now loading zones. Now, if you were hoping that it would, uh, 
actually do something, you're still going to be disappointed. But, uh... Congratulations, we found a drown house. Oh, did I already show this, actually? Yeah. Sorry, I have, like, a list on the side here of just places that, uh, are worth showing off in this playthrough, and I think I missed marking this one off, because I remember mentioning the drown house before, so... Never mind, this isn't anything new. Let's go ahead and reload, then. Bound to happen eventually. Just random repeating content. Alright, so this is... Bowser's Domain, I think. Um, this place is mostly unchanged from the old version. Um, I'm just trying to remember where and what everything is. I believe this pipe is where I want to be going, but I'm just double-checking something first. I don't remember what this door is. Ah. Was this always here? Eh, I don't remember. Whatever. Um, so, yeah, history with this place, from how, from how I remember it at least, when I was beta testing the old versions of 0 0.9 before it was public, uh, at one point there was like a hazy maze cave style entrance right here, and it led to um, Cave Dungeon, which was that crazy Kaizo level. Um, then that ended up getting moved to Star Road at the end of the game, and there was just a pipe here that would lead to um, basically like a... It, 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 B.O.B. Z64 is what it is. It's just, you know, the dark, weird version of bob -Omb's Battlefield, similar to the Womp's Fortress one. Um, and then that got moved there. <laughs> it, it's, like, still here. It's just, for some reason, it's now off to the side. I, I don't know why. Um, but, yep, we've got another dead-end lobby, basically. And this level is... Um, I don't think it's very different from how it used to be. There's a couple differences, though, so... Can you, uh, can you play Bob on Battlefield without being able to see very well? That is basically what we've got here. Does it still have the glitchy, like, collision on the stairs? from the vanilla, or has that changed? This seems to be a little different now. Mm -hmm. No, I think it's still glitchy. So they probably just imported the map exactly as it was, which would make sense. Um, let's see if I can make the jump up here without being able to see. So far, we're looking at no. Give this like one more try. Yeah. Mm, nah, not so much. It's uh, it's amazing how difficult things are when you can't actually see more than like a foot in front of you. Oh yeah. Speaking of which, I knew this was around here somewhere, but I couldn't remember where. This uh, might be one of the most obscure things in the whole game because it's just in this random level where you're unlikely to bump into it and, you know, with the fog of doom covering your vision constantly. But... Oh, good. I thought he gave you some text or something. Apparently not. That is just called, uh... Where is it on my list? Just King bob -Om's Void. And that was the whole place. I like this square shadow here, like, what the hell? That's about it, other than getting to the top of the level. Good thing I just remembered there was a hole there. Oh, it didn't remember that one, though, goddammit. Um, anyway, I can speed this process up. Guess what, we're trying to jump again. 
don't feel like running around the whole mountain. And it's going to be so worth it, too. Because, uh, you know, what could possibly be at the top of the mountain? There's only so many things it could be. If you don't know which one it is, uh, you know, text your answer to uh, I Heart Cheesecake. That, that's not a phone number. Ignore me. Anyway. And... That was it. <laughs> so yeah, this one uh, doesn't increase the star counter. That is a star ID 8, so that's a fake star. And it, uh, it points you to a map that doesn't exist. So it just crashes the game. And that's about it. Um, looking over my list of other stuff here, and you know, there's a couple things, but probably stuff I want to save for next time. Let me show one last thing then. Um, I wasn't sure when I was eventually going to get around to this one, but uh, I feel like now's as good a time as any. So. Before the game came out, I mentioned how, you know, because I was working on it a bit, there were... I, I was helping, you know, with some star placements and that sort of thing, and I had come up with one particularly horrible star placement. And I'm like, this thing is going to be the worst thing in the entire game, and people are going to hate it so much. Um, and that's exactly why I want it to be there, because it sucks ass. Um, and, uh... Here's the level. The thing is, the star isn't here anymore. Um, it was deemed too shitty. So, let me go ahead and lower the water level. I'll explain what it used to be, and I should have some, some old footage of it, but, uh... So this eel here, if you go next to it, it'll, uh, you know, do its little thing and then kind of swim away, and it's got a star attached to its tail. If you, yeah, if you time it exactly right, you can hit that star off of it. Um, the game is now just fucking up because this level is uh, filled with a bunch of these uh, Kaze Corruptor items. That is what they're actually called internally. Um, mostly in the corner back there. But basically, if you collect, if you touch that star, it's going to zoom off into infinity. Um, it appears way out of bounds. You can't even see it from here. Um... There's no way to collect that star. What I did was... I'm like, what if we do have a way to collect that star, but we make it really shit? And so, what I did was I placed a star magnet uh, in this corner, and it was set up with uh, a bunch of... God, the textures are going crazy here. Um... The star magnet was set up with um, certain flags active so that it would only appear if you were in Act 1 and if you were playing at night. Otherwise, the star magnet would not exist in the level, and so the star would still zoom out of bounds. Uh, so if you happened to be playing at night in Act 1 and got that thing like, and touched the star, it would, it would actually appear in bounds and you'd be able to collect it. Um... I did this while I was on a call with Chris, um, or at least I discussed the concept of it, and at first he was on board with it, because he's like, that is like the most diabolical, like, like, you know, ridiculously hidden star, like, nobody's gonna ever find this fucking thing, and, uh, yeah, it was, th that was my... That was my intent, but uh, I was eventually determined, you know, people are probably going to want to be able to finish this game, and uh, having one like that where no one's going to find it without a guide is a little shitty. So it got removed. But it's okay, it'll live on in my heart. And uh, I now have to double check if I uh, ever showed this off. Okay, so apologies for a bit of an awkward cut here. I wasn't exactly sure what was going to happen with this, and then uh, found that uh, my memory was also just completely wrong. So, 
I was reminded of this when I did the other water level, and I figured I'd show it now. Um, I am currently playing an older build of this. This was from January 31st, which was before the game was actually released. Um, I wanted to show this off because I just thought it was funny. Um, the thing is, apparently this has been fixed, and I just didn't know it. Um, because in my opinion, it didn't need fixing. I think it was great the way it was. But, uh... Anyway, this is, uh, you know, just one of the versions of Waterland accessed from Lobby A. And, uh, as soon as I open this last chest, it's gonna do something stupid. So, if you've played or watched previous versions of this game, um, that's just kind of what this star always did. For some reason, this just always created two. And in previous versions, these were always duplicate stars of each other. Um, when I when I was going through this and setting all the star IDs, I wanted to see why it was doing that. And um, because I asked, I'm like, why does this level create two stars? And he's just like, I don't know, it just always has. Um, I'm looking through it, and in the editor, there was um, there's an object that's called like treasure chest puzzle that's placed where the star is. Um, but then there was just kind of a second one of those, like, underground and out of the way. And somehow that had just always been there and was undetected. And I'm like, okay, well, I see why it's spawning two stars now. That's easy to fix. I can just delete one of these. But then I'm like, but what if I don't? So, collecting one of these stars gives an actual proper star. Like, it was in the extended four you can see on the tracker. Um, and the other one is an ID8 that, uh, so it's a fake star and it doesn't do anything. And I did this intentionally because I'm like, you know, it would be easy for me to just delete the second object, but this has always worked this way and it's dumb as hell and I kind of love it. At this point, it's like tradition for this to create two stars and it's like, now, what are my options? I can make it two duplicates. Um, I can make it two completely different stars, which would be really stupid, but, I mean, it would kind of work in its own way. But I'm like, but what if I make it a fake star and a real star? Because the thing about that is it's going to fuck you up no matter what order you collect them in. Because it's like, okay, let me collect the real star first. And then I go back into the level, I do the puzzle again, and now there's going to be another star still there. And it's like, you know, you collect, you go back and you collect that one, and you see that it didn't increase the total, and you're like, wait, what? And then, you know, we might check it again to see if it really doesn't count, and it's going to throw you off a little bit. Um, or, if you collect the fake one first... Then you come back in, and they're both going to show up as yellow again, and you don't even know if one of them is real at this point, and you have to just, you know, hope to get lucky again. Um, and I'm like, that is hilarious, and I'm, I'm keeping that. And I thought that uh, Chris was fine with this, but apparently not, because I guess he must have changed it when the game actually released. Oh well. I just wanted to show that off just because that was a thing that I did, and I thought it was stupid. Um... That's basically the end here, I guess. Uh, ooh, do we have polygonal nonsense going on, or was that just a bad camera angle? I think that was just a weird camera angle. Um, I've got uh, surprisingly few areas that I still need to cover, but uh, there's still stuff to go over in the game, so I'm going to leave that at that for now. And next time we'll, I guess, collect probably the rest of the red stars. I do want to look at some of the Big Boo's Haunt levels just to show off how annoying those were. Um, and we can start doing the end game stuff, but yeah. This isn't going to be a terribly long video series, but it's got a couple more videos left at least, two or three more. I will see you whenever that happens.